Docs, and welcome back, everybody. This is a continuation of our little mini series of uh, teaching Talks Tech. This is an opportunity for us to uh, get to know some of the mods. This is great if you're somebody who's played uh, vanilla Minecraft and doesn't really understand a lot of the modded world or try to make sense of all the mods that we have. Which, if you've ever seen us pull up our uh, inventories here, if you look at NEI on the uh, right hand side, see, there's a lot, <laughs> a lot of stuff, 44 pages worth of stuff. So we're going to try to go through and start learning a little bit of basics here. And Tox is, is uh, kind enough to be our guinea pig, so to speak. So today we're actually going to get into the basics. Tox has not had a chance to get some uh, basic automation as of yet. And we want to go ahead and fix that for him. There's a couple of reasons, obviously. <laughs> all, all about automation with modding. But uh, more importantly... Uh, things like being able to charge a jetpack at home instead of having to fly or walk all the way back to our place just to do it is a nice thing to have. Um, also, there are certain benefits of certain mod types of uh, modded amounts. For example, with uh, industrial craft, as one example, which we're going to be dealing with today, you can actually do certain perks like ore doubling. Get more out of your ore. Sounds like a great idea, doesn't it, Tox? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to do the basics of Industrial Craft. Industrial Craft is actually one of the oldest uh, mods out there, I believe. It's one of the first major mods that kind of existed. It's gone through a lot of uh, iterations. A lot of uh, hands have held it and taken care of it. Um, it technically was a deceased mod for all intents and purposes. But it has such a huge community that used it as a basis to put their own... Uh, additional mods onto or supporting mods onto it's just been kept up and supported all these years now we are still on 1.5 so we're still using the, the the old school industrial craft 2 setup uh, if you go up and hit up um, uh, the industrial craft wiki you'll be able to see the the list of recipes for the current one we're using and the new alpha experimental version that's coming out that says a big 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 change we'll talk about that a little bit later but to get started with, uh, the only thing about uh, industrial craft talks, um, there are lots of layers to the recipes, and <laughs> it gives me a jetpack. Yep, yep, there, there certainly are, certainly are. So we're gonna basically start you off with the with the fundamentals here. We're gonna do some basic tools, and uh, and fundamental uh, uh, automation and, and electricity and all that. So uh, first things first, when it comes to industrial craft. The most important thing is rubber trees. You, of course, have a huge forest of rubber trees, right? Oh, yeah. Look at them all over there. Oh, wait. Those are oak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ducks. <laughs> all right. So, Industrial Craft does have, actually, its own uh, rubber trees. I'm going to go ahead and give you... Whoops. I'm going to turn, turn off my coin so I can give you stuff. Hey, here's an idea. Coin of Fortune, people. It is a must-have idea uh, item if you like to do... Uh, uh, certain work. So there you go. There, there right there is the uh, rubber trees from Industrial Craft 2. Now I'm also going to give you a uh, half stack here of a different type of rubber tree. This is from a different mod, uh, Mine Factory Reloaded. Now what's nice mm. about these trees, I'm going to go ahead and out here while we're talking, is uh, these trees are actually part of the Ore Dictionary. Now for people who don't understand what that is, then the name is kind of a little misleading. But basically because there's so many mods that have certain... Um, similar things, like in this case, rubber trees and rubber, they've come together to create a, a ore dictionary so that each different mod can be cross-compatible. So if you have two different mods that have the same item, like copper, for example, you'll be able to use both types of copper in the same recipe if you need to. Most items have their own item IDs. This allows you to use either or, so we're going to be used either or of these. So for the rubber trees, what's important about these is you need rubber to create a lot of electrical circuitry, wires, etc. So that's yeah. what we're going to be using today. So let's go ahead and uh, clear out the space here. We've already got a little bit laid out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clear out this stuff here and put some actual dirt down. If you yeah. want to start planting some of those uh, saplings, while I get this there dirt any restrictions in restrictions on where the saplings can go? No, you can pretty much, I usually put them you know, a, a few blocks apart from each other. Uh, yeah, you know, just enough to make just enough to make a little room here. Now, the reason I wanted to give you both of these uh, saplings, like I said, is they're kind of easy to see how they work. But I wanted to give you a little insight as to how these work and how they differ from each other. Now, ironically, you'll see that there are... I'll put one down here, one down here. You'll notice that these guys have uh, the little, little baby saplings over here. They actually have little orange dots on them. That's the right. Industrial Craft 2 saplings. These guys here, a little, little more kind of abstract uh, looking guys. These are the uh, Minecraft Reloaded, or my Reloaded ones. Now, 
the big difference between these two types of uh, trees here is that the industrial craft trees, once they grow up, you're going to see a little orange dot on them. And we're actually going to be able to harvest from those trees, keep the trees alive if we want to. Now I'm going to pop back over to your house here where we've got a crafting bench. Now if you've got some wood planks on you, this is time to have them. We're going to go ahead and make ourselves a tap. So a tap is going to be wood planks. And they're going to be in slot going from left to right top to bottom, slot 2, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So it kind of looks like a little faucet shape. Yeah, makes sense. So that gives you a little tree tap. Now the tree taps that we're going to use to harvest the rubber out of these uh, rubber trees. Now, here's here's a, here's a kind of the kicker of this. This is really good when you're kind of at the beginning of the game if you have the industrial craft. Oh, do you have any bone meal by chance, by the way? No, but I got a million bones in there. Hey, why don't you go grab some of those? We'll go ahead and expedite the growth of these guys a little bit. Yeah, sure. So Good with the industrial lapse. craft, you're going to be able to actually harvest the rubber off these guys repeatedly with the rubber taps. Um, this way you can have a living tree that you start off with and just keep stepping outside once in a while and pulling some uh, raw rubber um, or sticky resin off these things. Now the manufacturer reloaded trees, not the same deal. These guys you actually are going to be cutting down. So why don't you go ahead and give these guys a little bit of love and get them to grow up big and strong. There we oh, go. Oh, this was before that uh, update where you had to click it a few times. Uh, these actually don't react to it, but the vanilla stuff will actually will. Oh, okay. There we go. Now for the industrial craft guys here with the dark wood, I'm going to go ahead and strip the leaves off. Now there's been conversation regarding leaving leaves on so they produce more or produce rubber more, whatever the case may be. I'm not going to go into the details there. I just want to get the things cleared out a little bit. And you'll notice as I get these leaves cleared out, you're going to see those little orange dots I was talking about. Yeah. Now, these trees can't have more than one orange dot. They can have types have several. And all of these over a random tick cycle will actually regen that rubber. So again, these trees right here, you're going to be able to sit there and just use your rubber tap and right-click a little orange dot and get some sap, uh, some sap out of it. Whoops. Oh, that's one tree. <laughs> So Even get sticky situation. <laughs> Let's stick go. Now, the the thing to keep in mind here is uh, first things first. When you tap a uh, a little rubber thing, oh man, I'm punching holes in everything. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I worked hard on that shack. <laughs> it shows. <laughs> uh, <laughs> go ahead and find some of these little orange dots here and right click them with your uh, tap. I got a few of the resin already. Okay. So you see, I'm going to do it on this one just so I guess to see it. There we go. So there's you go. That gives you the sticky resin. And again, this is the industrial uh, craft solution, if you will. Now, with these guys here, as I said before, there's no t way to tap these. So what you can do mm -hmm. is really just saw them down and replant them. Okay. Now, here's the other kicker. Even the industrial craft two ones, you can just come straight down. You will get a little bit of resin out of them and then replant them. Some people will go that route, especially for automation purposes, just because right. it's a little easier and faster for them to expand their forest, get more saplings, and get the rubber they need. So that's pretty much how that rolls. Now, have you gotten... How many pieces of uh, rubber have you gotten? Uh, I have three resin. resin. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's cheat a little bit here. Let's go ahead and cut these uh, these guys down. Okay. Like I said, oftentimes you'll sometimes get a little, a little extra out of them, if you will. I hate tall ones. There you go. So I got one out of that one. Yeah. I'm going to break down Actually, all these yeah. uh, leaves just to get a little extra. Now, the rubber trees, if you're out in the forest, the IC2, uh, IC2 rubber trees kind of stand out. If you look at the top of this one right here where I still have some of the foliage left, they are very characteristic in that they have three blocks of leaves straight on top of the stump. So if you go fly right, up yeah. the top and you'll see them. So if you're ever flying out in the forest, well, flying, walking, whatever the case may be, just to keep a lookout for those, you'll know that those are the right trees you're looking for. Okay, that's some extra rubber for you. And what oh, I would nice. do is just go ahead and plant the uh, uh, saplings back down. Now, the industrial industrial craft uh, rubber trees tend to be a little bit like the oak trees of vanilla, which is to say they don't mind being butt up against each other. They will grow regardless. Okay. The, the only problem with that is if you do that, then you can't see 
the sides to harvest rubber. So the, if the sides have the rubber dot on them, you can't see them. Yeah. So if you plan to leave them alive and harvest oh. them over time, then I advise you to do what I'm doing here, which is strip off the leaves on the side and leave them at least one space apart from each other. It's about the best efficiency you can do. If you're going to sit there and cycle through them constantly by uh, cutting them down and putting them back up, then go ahead and go that route. Now, if you these oh, guys right here, are, I'm going to let you go ahead and cut this other one down. I want you to see okay. the difference when it comes to how much rubber you get out of these guys. Oh, there goes one. <laughs> There's another. <laughs> so you see, you're going to get one to two pieces of uh, of this uh, rubber, well, raw rubber, for every single right. log you rip out. So these guys are kind of efficient in that regard. If you, as long as you don't mind coming out here and actually physically cutting them down and putting them back up, they're actually very good for that. I'll get a turtle. So, that's pretty much that. Pretty much gives you kind of fundamentals there. Now we're gonna go ahead and step inside here. This is uh, Tox's uh, new place. You can see right here, Tox Technical Training Shack. <laughs> this is where we're gonna be setting up shop. Now, Couldn't again, think of a, a cool word that started with T. At the end there. <laughs> um, what we're going to be doing here in terms of uh, getting things set up is going to be automation, both for the sake of automation, as, and again, our goal here is going to be the fundamentals for ore doubling, well, among other things. So the, the machinery we're going to be making today, it's kind of a baseline, is going to be, uh, first and foremost, a generator. It's going to be a coal fire generator. This is going to be your base level starting out means to create power. There are other tier one power sources, such as windmills, water mills, and solar panels. I'd prefer to go this route because you can throw anything that burns into it, and it's a good way to get right. started. It produces a good bit of power. We'll talk about the technicals of power maybe another time. As we yeah, work sure. our way up there, we'll talk about some other neat things to have too. Uh, let's go ahead and get a uh, crafting bench, and right here, are you? There you go. <laughs> oh, you got one. Cool. So, yeah, yeah, crafting bench up. And they're also going to watch the regular old, good old-fashioned vanilla furnace. Um, oh, I was just about to run back home to get a crafting bench. <laughs> here we go, I got a furnace up here already. Now we're going to go ahead and throw some burnables in there, and let's go ahead and throw that rubber in. All right, uh, yeah. All oh, my coal's back at the house. Cole's good to have. I've got plenty of wood and whatnot, so. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go grab some coal here. Okay. Now, what we're doing right now is we're getting this rubber uh, cooked up, and the reason for it is, of course, is what we have is sticky resin or, in the case of a Mine Factory Reloaded, raw rubber. We need to actually cook that into rubber bars, which is from the Mine Factory Reloaded, or rubber which is uh, industrial craft. Now, again, these are completely interchangeable. They're synonymous with each other nowadays. Um, so you can use either or. I just wanted to have both of them up here to show you guys so you can see the difference between the two. So sticky resin, industrial craft 2, turns in rubber. Raw rubber turns into rubber bars, which is mine factory reloaded. So you can go ahead and get the regular industrial craft rubber going on top there. That's sticky resin. Got it. Now, you notice as we're cooking from these furnaces here, for every one resin, we're getting one rubber. Same with the deal with the uh, uh, raw rubber. We're also going to be able to up that ante a little bit. Uh, yes, that looks familiar. Now, as this is working, let's go ahead and grab. We're going to need three different uh, means of metal. Iron, uh, copper, and tin. Copper and tin, yes, okay. Now we're going to start getting into the important aspect, which is going to be both the power generation as well as the power transfer we're actually going to need to move the power from the generator to other locations we're going to do that via cable now when it comes to industrial craft there are many different types of cable ranging from tin cable which is a very ultra low voltage cable all the way up to hv cable which is ultra high voltage cable just so you know industrial craft has well effectively f <laughs> four or five Six. Well, there's a lot of different tiers of power, but the common ones you're going to be dealing with are going to be the low voltage, or LV, the medium voltage, or MV, and then the 
high voltage or HV. And you see a lot of uh, different machinery will have that designation or upgrades to make them support that. We're going to start with the low tier, which is going to be the LV system, which is going to be the basic generator we're talking about. Good place to start, I guess. I tend to think so, yes. All right, so, so. I got some copper in the top furnace. Mm -hmm. And uh, tin ore is just sitting in my bar. Um, oh, I got some lovely lag going on all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. At least you could open the door. Yeah, yeah no, I'm just getting real, real chunky here. I tell you, while we're waiting for the uh, rubber to get uh, cooked up here, we'll go ahead and let that get done. We'll come back when we're ready, okay? We'll be uh, right back. BRB. Okay, we're back. So we got the, all of our refined iron and copper and all kinds of good stuff lined up here. It says rubber bars, also regular rubber for IC again, tin and so on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build uh, some wires to actually get the power from the power generation, which is going to be the uh, electric uh, generators, to the uh, tools we need to use. So to start off with, we're going to go ahead and make some copper cable. Now to do that, all you got to do is just take the three copper ingots across the middle. That's going to give you three uninsulated cable. Now, with industrial craft, you don't have to care nearly as much about uh, uh, insulated versus uninsulated copper. I go ahead and insulate just for kicks and giggles, just to make things easier. So to do that, we're going to put rubber on the top and bottom of... Uh, the system here of our uh, ingots, if you will. And you see you're going to get the insulated copper cable. Now that'll give you six of them, so I'll give you a good little, little bit run. Now, something for another day, just so you know, there's a whole big whooping to do when it comes to uh, uh, insulated versus uninsulated, how far power can run on copper cable versus a gold cable versus other cables. Uh, <laughs> there's a whole lot out there, and uh, that's not something I can really talk about today. We might might just actually cover it uh, at a later date here, but for now, just understand a couple of basics here, which is copper cable only does low voltage. Don't ever, never try to use it for high voltage, and number two, <coughs> don't run it further than five. All oh. right. So just bear that in mind. Five in length. Five in length. You got it. Because after that, you start getting power degradation. If you look at the the wiki, the wiki will give you a little insight into that. You'll notice uh, on the wiki, for a copper cable, it tells you about what its capacity is, 32 EU, which is a low voltage, up to, 100, up to 128 in experimental, we're not going to worry about that. But you'll see EU loss rate is 0.29, which basically means how far it can go before it starts losing EU. Now, getting into the EU, there's... EU per tick, EU packets, etc. Again, this is going to be a whole other day to deal with this. Right now, let's just work on the technical. <laughs> <laughs> now, when it comes to the aspect of running power, there's uh, power generation, there's power storage, and then there's power use. We've got three different categories. So for power generation, we're going to be making ourselves some uh, power generators. And power generators are basically firing uh, uh, coal or wood or anything like that to produce electricity. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and make ourselves um, uh, some basic some basic needs. The first one's going to be a uh, RE battery. Now, an RE battery is, uh, just as it sounds, a battery. We're going to need some tin, some redstone, and that copper cable. So we're going to put copper cable in slot 2 at the very top. We're going to put tin and 4 and 7 and uh, 6 and 9. And then we're going to stick the redstone right in the middle of that tin. I think that should be it. Actually, is it tin or is it? I can't remember anymore. I think it was tin. I think it was tin. Yeah. I might be losing my mind here. I don't know. Well, it says on the wiki tin. Uh oh. You know what I think? I think we just got Greg teched. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>